So I want to talk about whether you should have your life together by the time that you are 30. I think this is an important question that many of you are thinking about at this point. And um, 30 might seem a long ways away for many of you that are watching this and 30 might not seem that far off for some of you and 30 might have seemed a long time ago. Uh, for many of you that are watching this, but I want to talk about like having any set time of having your life together and whatever that means. So for me personally, I always tried to have my life together in many different ways, right? I did, uh, and you could sort of see it, what I actually did. I'm not bragging in any sort of way. I'm just kind of like that kind of person that, that sort of plans and thinks things out. Um, you know, I was married by the time I was 25. I had an engineering degree, I had my master's degree, then I went and did a PhD in strategy or business. Um, I did everything that was very sort of systematic in terms of getting there. And it's very sort of thinking of the climbing of uh, mentality where I'm thinking about, okay, I need this to do this and I need this to do this. Um, and I was always thinking about having my life together by a certain time, right? I always wanted my life together. That's who I am as a person. But what I've realized is that having your life together is the stupidest mindset you'll ever hear about. And so I'm, I'm kind of wrong. Actually, I'm very wrong in how I viewed the world in the past. Um, there is no kind of set moment and where you have your life together. We don't live in a binary world. I think that that is really ridiculous, that you have to have your life together by the time you're 30, right? And if you don't, then everything's gonna fall apart. Um, you have to have your life together by the time you're 60, and if you don't, everything's gonna fall apart. Um, you have to have your life together by the time you're 80, and if you don't, everything's gonna fall apart. All of that is just nonsense, because what you have to realize, it's a stepping stone. And it's a, it's a process, it's a learning process where you're gradually learning things and getting exposed to new things. And from that, you have to think about what you should do going forward based on the available information that you actually have. So things can change dramatically, but you have to learn from your past experiences. That's the really important thing is remember that it's a continuous process that we are exposed to all the time. We have a continuous stream of information and experiences that are given to us. And we don't have a certain moment where we are, our life is together and our life is not, right? Like, like that, is, that is ridiculous. Sometimes you have something that sort of throws things a little bit off, right? And that's okay. And then from that, you have to learn from how do you deal with that moment of how you get thrown off. What do you respond to that? How can you actually do that? If you have a, a tendency to overspend financially, for example, well, how can you learn from that? What can you gather from that information of like, okay, this didn't work out for me in the past. What can I do to go forward so I can become a better person? From that, um, this means that you can have your life completely in shambles up until you're 70, 80, 90 years old. And then one day you just kind of decide, I'm going to do this and I'm going to figure out how to get my life together in various different ways, right? I can exercise more. That means going for walks. Um, I can think about my financial future. I can think about, um, you know, really trying to help other people out and working on my family. And, and I can think about all sorts of different things like that. I can think about my, my education, my career, all of those kind of things which means that there's not a moment where you are never ever like having your life together. I mean, that's the, what's called the corollary, right? Like the opposite thing, right? There's never a moment where you have your life together because things change dramatically. There might be a moment where you think everything is going fine and all of a sudden everything changes. And that's totally fine. You have to sort of go with the flow, right? There's many moments where life does that to you, where, where you know, everything is going perfectly and you have it out as planned. And then somebody in your family gets cancer or, you know, somebody in your family goes through something traumatic and you have to deal with that. And so you have to sort of think about, okay, given all of this information, given what's going on, what can I do going forward to figure out how to deal with this? It's not necessarily like your life is going to be all together if you do this, right? I think the biggest thing, and this is the hardest thing that I think most people have to deal with, is 
learning how to disregard other people and thinking about like, how can I be a nonconformist with my social um, around, around um, the people that are around me? And how can I feel like I'm okay, even if I let those people down, if they don't believe that I am so and so, or, you know, that they realize that I don't have my life together, that I've got all of these problems, is that going to affect anything? The answer is no, it doesn't change anything. In fact, it probably helps you in the long run. But you have to realize that, that nobody cares about, um, you know, how pretty your house looks. If those people actually care about that, then golly, what kind of life that you're, you're living in. Nobody cares about your, you know, how you are in terms of your financial stability. Nobody cares about your career and where you are in terms of your career. Those people, it's a temporary feeling that you might get where people might be impressed with you, but not as they get to know you, they understand what you're about and they can sort of see everything that goes on around you. So I want you to remember, you don't have to have your life together by the time you're 30. That's nonsense. What you need to do is think about how you can incrementally slow, slowly build towards something that makes you a little better than what you were in the past. And whatever that looks like, that's totally fine. And whenever you choose to do that, that's totally fine. But you have to choose that. You have to decide to actually do that. Part of the um, thing that I've also learned, this is the thing that I've really struggled with. You probably, you can even see it a lot in the videos that I've done in the past, is that um, I did have my life together. We did do everything kind of as planned. And then I sort of reached what I wanted to do, right? I became a tenured professor at a good school. And, um, you know, I've, I've sort of done everything that I wanted to do. And then I was struggling with like, what the heck do I do with myself now, right? Like that's part of the problem is that um, I've had to really change. And that's what sort of triggered me to change is to think about, hey, you know what? There's ever expanding things that I could possibly do. Um, you know, if, if eventually I go work in industry and all that kind of stuff, that's totally fine. It might feel weird. But that's fine. That sort of grows me in a different way. If, um, you know, this whole reciprocity project continues to grow, I'll be dedicated to continuing to grow with it. That's totally fine. Um, you know, if um, my, my family decides to move someplace, I'm probably okay with it. And all of these things is what I'm getting at is, is that helps me grow as a person. And that helps me realize that, hey, wait a minute, this is not the moment when everything is all together. I have to continuously grow and develop as a person. And I think everybody should realize that you can do that. You can choose to do that. You know that old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? That's nonsense, right? It's absolutely nonsense. But that old dog has to be willing to actually try and to spend the time to do it themselves. They're not hopeless. They're not sitting there um, you know, oh, I can't do this thing and all that kind of stuff. You have to actually choose to do it. That's your choice. And if you don't choose to do it, well, then that's fine for you too. But just realize that things are not going to be, you know, getting a little, a little, little better. Because things do get better as you continue to work at it and push at it. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel like it sometimes, many times. But things do get better. It does get easier as you continue to push forward and to do things and, and to step forward and to know that you can do these things. So whether it means, you know, quitting um, vaping and quitting smoking and all of this kind of stuff that's going to be that's harmful for you in the long run. Just remember when you're doing it, it's nothing to do about like, I'm going to do it and everything's going to change all at once. That's stupid. Um, you can incrementally get there a little bit at a time. Right? Some days you fall off and you go back, but then you got to get back up and you got to be willing to do it again and again and again, no matter what happens. I think that's it. So your, your life is not done at the age of 30. I'm just telling you that there's a lot of life to live going forward. And you still have a lot that you can do. Even when you're 80 years old, you have a lot that you can do and grow and develop. Don't buy in to the narrative that you're done at any point. That is garbage. Be a nonconformist. Disregard other people and live your life. 
know that you're continuously getting better as you're going. All right, take care and have a wonderful day.